So I'll pass my screen to you now, Judy, and we can get okay. going. Thanks very Lovely. much. Thank you. We've got quite a... There we go. Okay. Lovely. Thank you, Heather. That's lovely. So hi, everybody. Um, we've got quite a lot to share with you um, regarding the subject of making change a success. So regarding the presentation, it's going to be in three parts. So the first part we're going to cover is fashion market challenges. Then I will talk about Lectra's model for change. And finally, I'll talk about sustaining business transformation. So let's get started on the market challenges. The world has changed and so has business. The changes in Shanghai between 1990 and today are a very strong illustration of how the world has changed so fast. So you can see the first slide showing Shanghai in the 1990s and how much that same view has changed in such a relatively short time. The emergence and the rapid growth of China has had a major impact on the world and certainly nowhere more than in the fashion industry. We all know about globalization within the fashion industry. Companies are no longer doing business as they did before. Supply chains are stretching, as we know, across the world. New markets and growing economies, of course, also mean new consumers and very empowered consumers. Consumers today have direct access to all the latest fashion trends and products. And the industry needs to be able to provide those products to the consumers, but they have to be able to do it in a responsible way. And hence, the subject of sustainability is now firmly on the table. And retailers and brands and manufacturers alike need to understand what social responsibility and sustainability mean for them. So connected consumers, looks like most people's dinner table now, I think. This is probably the single biggest challenge for the fashion industry. The fashion industry is one of the sectors where it's been most affected by the digital revolution, and it accounts for the majority of online sales. Connected consumers means that providing an online channel for retailers now is no longer an option. And this is also, of course, adding complexity to retailers and brands alike. So these changes have had a major impact on how we work. And let's take a look at how that has changed in our industry today. In the past, clothing retailers had exclusive access to fashion trends for products, fabrics, and colors, which meant that they decided what the top styles and colors for the season would be in advance. The products would be sourced and put in store, ready for the consumers, who in most cases went shopping to discover the latest colors and trends. Today, consumers can find out everything online, so that when they go to stores or they choose to shop online, they already know pretty much what they're looking for. Based on online and store sales, retailers now develop their product offer, then source it. The products are what the consumer wants. So the consumer is now at the heart of the process. So let's go back to China for a moment. The rise of China in terms of economic dominance has really changed over time. We can see here in terms of the global economic power back in the 1870s, it was all about the British Empire. Germany and France. Then a hundred years later, more or less, we see the importance of the United States in terms of a global economic power, of Japan and of Germany. But the US at that time was very dominant, and that wasn't that long ago in the 1970s. Then, roughly 50 years later, we see the emergence of China. So the economic power now being shared between the US and China, and then Japan. And this has continued. And the forecast for 2030 shows a major dominance of China, the US still there, but considerably further behind, and then the emergence of India. So China is on the rise, and the world is continuing to change. 
and this continues to have big impact on our industry. The information that you see in front of you now is about the evolution of fashion and apparel sales in billions of dollars. This is from the Euromonitor. And we can see how India, China, and Brazil, the red part on each column, how it is growing, and it has grown from the beginning of the millennium. And it will continue to grow to be a third of total global fashion and apparel sales, a much bigger growth than we'll see in the other parts of the world. In addition to the sales, we also know that there's going to be a huge impact on the number of garments produced. We can see that growth here in billions of garments produced between 2008 and what is predicted for 2016. So huge growth in the number of garments produced. And in terms of where those garments are produced, nearly half still coming out of China. We know that China is changing fast again in terms of wage increases, in terms of also what's happening in, for their need for their own local economy, but still a major player. Then the mature markets, Indonesia, for example, at 19%. And then the huge area now of ASEAN and India at 20%. But we also have proximity sourcing at 9%, and we know that as a result of the long-distance sourcing becoming more complicated and more expensive, many retailers have gone for proximity sourcing, and that's something that will continue to grow. And then the power of the Brazilian market at 9%. So let's think a little bit about our industry. Essentially, there are three principal business models in the fashion apparel industry that we're all familiar with. Retailing, manufacturing, and brand. Each business model has its own set of priorities. So within the retail business model, the priorities are about profit margin, about fashion products being on trend, about the presentation of these products, and about channels. So all companies understanding the importance of having several distribution channels, and more importantly and more recently, an online channel. For manufacturers, the priority, of course, is still production, but increasingly an awareness of the importance of quality, the importance of being on time, for the retailers to be on time to market, and still the importance of cost as they get squeezed continuously in these challenging competitive markets. The brand story is still very much one of innovation, telling a product story and the importance of its product itself. But all of these business models are evolving. And what we see is what we call a hybrid model, as the different business models often extend into each other. Retailing brands are taking vested interest in manufacturing as they understand the importance of having more control over product exclusivity and quality. They want to have a real influence on their supply chain. And the manufacturers are looking to increase speed and efficiency for their customers. They want to differentiate themselves by offering higher quality products and more added value services. So let's take a look at the business model. It's important when organizations want to rethink their business model or improve their efficiency of their business model. So when companies make a change to their business model, either because they want to make their existing business model more efficient or because they are changing to a more hybrid model, they need to understand what makes their business work today so they can manage the change and not damage what has made their business function well today. They need to think about four principal factors. The company, customer, value proposition. This is why customers or consumers come to them today. It's their DNA. They need to understand what that is and how it works. The, the key processes within their organization and how they link both internally and externally. The resources and roles and responsibilities. Who does what? and the profit formula. 
All of these elements will be impacted by change and so must be carefully managed. And we'll look at that in more detail later when we talk about how Electra can support this. But let's come back to the fashion industry for a moment. Whatever the business model, we know that the changes in this industry are faster and stronger than in any other industry. Fashion companies have to change. There's no choice but to adapt to the new market challenges. The changing consumer behavior mean a greater demand and a volatility of demand. The loyal consumer can no longer be guaranteed. Product diversity means more complexity to manage in terms of the number of styles and collections, not to mention the need for coordinated ranges and more complex size ranges. The competition is more aggressive and creativity has never been more important. Globalization means entering and adapting to new markets to survive. And regulations are prevailing for fashion companies and manufacturers that matter to consumers. So sustainability isn't a choice. This is something that's coming into our industry as it's a requirement from our consumers. Fast fashion itself has been a major game changer. This business model is still proving successful over the more traditional business models. So if we have a look here, we can see the growth that the fast fashion giants such as Inditex and H&M have been able to achieve between 2008 and 2014, compared to a more traditional model such as Gap or a very traditional model such as Dillard. But what we want to look at here is really the complexity of these businesses. We can see, for example, that in terms of expected customer visits per year, in a more traditional model, there are not going to be so many visits to the store. Therefore, the demand on the choice of the product offer is much less. For the fast fashion, it's much greater. We're expecting customers to come up to 20 times to a brand in one year. So this choice, also has a different effect on, on markdown, on sale goods. The traditional model is still having to mark down much harder. And the main reason being that they still tend to create much longer product runs. So that overall there's less choice and the runs are longer, which can have certain advantages. But for fast fashion, in order to create the interest in store, they have many more products on shorter runs. And so overall, markdowns are proving to be less. And again, the number of seasons. <clears throat> Many fewer seasons for the traditional model compared with the fast fashion model. So here in this fast fashion model, we have many more products going into store on a frequent basis, driving the customer visit. So here are our, a few of our very well-known brands, H&M, Fast Fashion, Gap, some way between the traditional and the fast fashion, Marks and Spencer, trying to be on trend, getting closer to fashion, but still a more classic offer, Zara, fast fashion, top shop, very much fast fashion. The challenge, however, as we've been saying, is that everybody knows now what are the key products. And we often find the same key products in all of these brands. Every brand wants, if trench coats are in or a recognized basic, everybody wants to have one. So the question is, which coat for which brand? How do we differentiate when everybody is doing the same product? So let's bring up another differentiator, price. Certainly these brands have different price positioning, which will of course be relating to different quality, to different fabrics. But when you're choosing the same type of item, it's often quite difficult to make the difference. So let's take a look and see who actually made what. Overall, it's not so easy to differentiate unless you're extremely loyal to brand. So this, what we're actually finding is that there is a certain oversaturation. And the oversaturation of choice 
is also leading to a lot of markdowns a lot of the time. So as we've seen, the fast fashion companies don't tend to suffer from the markdowns in the same extent, but there are still a lot of markdowns. So it is increasingly difficult for companies to differentiate themselves in the marketplace. What about e-commerce? Today, from studies that have been done in the US particularly, we know that 12 to 14 percent of clothing is bought online. 19 percent of fashion footwear is bought online. However, let's remember that 80 percent of clothing sold in, in stores is tried on first something, of course, we can't do when we're shopping online. But of the clothing bought online, a third of customers are said to be unhappy that only 21% returning their items. 70% of clothing returns are due to poor fit. 1% reduction in the rate of returns would be a 1% increase in net profit for these companies. So it's not too complicated to begin to think about fit, all very closely related to quality, and to be clear that one size certainly does not fit all, and that there's no one definition of fit, but that getting fit right is key to ensuring more full price sales and fewer returns. So in terms of these fashion challenges, it's not simple and not easily managed. Companies need to change to do this effectively. They have to be able to manage all of these challenges, the number of styles, the customer requirements and priorities, being sure that they get to market on time, fending off their competition, managing complex global logistics, making sure that fit and body shape are taken into consideration and making decisions fast. If we take a look at the supply chain and how we're working, certainly in the 1990s and even in some cases today, the supply chain has remained extremely sequential where each activity is a handoff to the next. And until a previous activity is completed, it's quite difficult to move to the next. And nowhere is this more true than in the product development part of the process. As time moved on, companies knew they had to go faster, and basically that's what they did. They kept the same activities. Very few activities have been able to be removed from the fashion supply chain. The pressure is to be able to go faster. And today, some companies have understood the importance of the fully integrated supply chain flow, the importance of being able to do activities in the same time, not waiting for sequential, a, a, a sequential approach for activities to be handed off. And the only way that this can successfully be achieved is through proper collaboration by sharing information across the entire supply chain and no longer working in information silos. It's all about technology. Many companies today are still working with disconnected technology, disconnected tools. Calendars on Excel sheets, budgets on Excel sheets, tech packs on Excel sheets or siloed technology systems where information is very, very difficult to share and very, very difficult to update, to update and extremely difficult to share with external partners. So, with all that in mind, Lectra has a model for change. Lectra has a model to support business transformation and change. Companies have understood that there is much more complexity. They have less time, they have more partners who they need to work with, and costs are going up. And there's a lot of data. But they want to have fewer errors, they want to have time for more innovation and more communication 
and they need more expertise. The need for transformation affects all fashion and apparel companies in all sectors, be it fast fashion, be it sports specific, or lingerie, for example. Transformation could be a new sourcing process, or a more effective product development process, or design process, or the implementation, the implementation of a collaborative technology platform. Within the fashion apparel industry, many companies need to improve the way they work from design to production in order to stay competitive. And Lectra has the technology and the methodology to help them do just that. So let's look at transformation and change in more detail. The growing complexity of the fashion industry has forced companies to transform from their traditional business models in order to remain both innovative and competitive. By transforming process and methods from design to production, they can work faster and have more time for product innovation. So Lectra's customer value proposition is made up of three parts, expertise, approach, and technology. And this is designed to support companies in their business transformation. In a dynamic fashion environment, companies need to adapt their way of working to meet consumer expectations without sacrificing their brand equity. And Lectra has 40 years of fashion experience in this apparel industry, which we can bring to businesses to help them transform. So let's look at how we can sustain business transformation. Let's start with expertise. A successful project requires industry expertise and a proven project approach. And Lectra has both. So if we look more closely at Lectra's expertise, we have a special definition at Lectra for expertise. We have expertise from all over the world. And we have local resources. And we understand the need for expert project resources who have experienced similar customer-specific issues and who have a knowledge of global best practices. So our definition is a combination of specialized industry skills and international best practices. And this is what we bring to our customers. This is an example from a PLM survey by which PLM. When asked if industry expertise and local qualified resources are important in choosing a PLM vendor, the majority said yes. And as quoted in the which PLM report, 80% of customers declare that the expertise of the team in a project is a key point to the success of that project. Our international best practices, which are gathered from all over the world, are a mix of common practices and requirements from the global fashion market. Lecture professional service teams have both process and organization knowledge from all fashion sectors and can leverage this knowledge and experience from previous projects around the world and apply it to new projects. When we talk about expertise, we are referring to our experts and professional service teams. We have many different profiles in our sales teams, from design to production, who have business and technology knowledge, and who are comfortable working at all levels within an organization. We also have research and development experts and process consultants to manage client projects. We also have five international call centers to support our PLM and technology customers around the world and to help sustain our project implementation. Lectra has 400 consultants, project managers, and solution experts to support customers worldwide. Pity Battle, a French vertical brand, is one of Lectra's customers. And as you can see, they were very impressed with Lectra's expertise. 
and they understood how experienced project teams can help challenge their own resources. And this was one of the more valuable aspects of their project. Uh, sorry, their project. So if we have a look now at our approach, Lectra has its own consulting methodology, which can be deployed when companies require help to understand why they need PLM and if they need to truly transform their business. It also ensures that the areas in the organization most requiring change are identified from the outset in the scoping exercise. This methodology ensures the buy-in from all key members of the organization from the start. So beginning with the scoping where key people in the management and within teams are involved in providing a view of how their company is working currently, what works well, what works less well, Lectra is able to advise them in the key areas they need to address and basically where the projects should be targeted from the beginning. Afterwards, we can then analyze in more detail these areas and together with our clients design the project roadmap to address their needs. At that point, we are then set up and motivated on both sides to go into an effective project implementation, which will be sustained with Lectra support once the go-live has passed. The methodology comes with many tools which help identify and measure the issues and enable the project roadmap to be built and sustained. Lecture's goal is to sustain change and to help customers succeed in their transformation. We have a proven iterative implementation approach. We get early feedback from our customers and we help build confidence quickly, which is very, very important when implementing a new technology approach. And once the customers are live and the on-site project team has moved on, we have dedicated expert customer care services to support and help our customers continue successfully using our technology and even extend world on a worldwide level. So another customer is DIN Branded Apparel, We've also chosen Lectra Fashion PLM Collaborative Platform. And what they particularly have identified is the speed with which the project was implemented and the extra time that the technology is giving their teams to concentrate on the real priorities of growing their business. So last but not least, the technology. We believe absolutely we have the right technology in Lectra Fashion PLM. Let's take a closer look at what that means. So as I mentioned, still today and for many companies up until now, working with disconnected solutions, particularly Excel or best of breed product data management systems, or merchandise planning system has meant that it's very, very difficult for data to be integrated and connected to where it's needed to make the right product decision. So today with Lectra's fashion, collaborative fashion platform where we integrate the different modules to allow the information to flow through the supply chain, we can bring a totally collaborative approach from design to production, moving from disconnected tools to a collaborative platform. So Lecture Fashion Platform is a very far-reaching solution. It is composed of a platform base called the Lecture Fashion Platform. It enables many different processes, data alignment, and sharing of information for all users. On top of the platform sit, can sit specific fashion business applications. The combination of the platform, the business application, the users and connectivity with other business systems and with other teams is what makes the approach so powerful. So 
So the business applications can be Lectra's other solutions, such as the CAD Modara solution, or Diamino, or Calido. And this means that the platform works both strategically and operationally, flexibly and efficiently. And the 40 years of Lectra's fashion experience are integrated into the platform approach. Suppliers can also be given access and connections can be made with other business systems such as ERP for a full enterprise wide connectivity. So if we look a little closer at the scope of the Lectra Fashion PLM, it covers six macro business processes, plan and manage, creative design, color development, product development, sourcing and RFQ, and material development. Within plan and manage, we have budget plan and collection plan, calendar management, the priority list for each user, critical path management, which allows us to manage the workflow by priority, reporting, KPIs and dashboards. So plan and manage is all about budget and managing time. We also have product development, which is the heart of the platform offer, which basically supports the tech pack development, which is natively integrated with our 2D and 3D CAD, effectively supporting product development. The product development module allows companies to specify all their tech pack information, to do collaborative fit sessions with feedback, to develop the prototype part of the process and manage the quality test. Very importantly, respecting size and measurement specification. And very importantly, this particular application has a native link to AI allowing the management of technical drawing. Last but not, not least, we have a very, very rich source of libraries which allows users to very, very quickly build tech packs and manage all the construction information. For sourcing and RFQ, we help companies to be sourcing efficient. RFQ management allows companies to build and send requests or quotes directly to their suppliers. The processes support the direct sourcing model or a more full sourcing model if bill of materials and bill of labor costings are required, or production costing, or supplier management. Lectra basically has a very broad reaching sourcing and RSQ business application that support retailers, brands, and manufacturers alike. And then creative design. Lectra is unique in having on their collaborative platform processes and technology supporting design. So we have creative design functionality, storyboard development, style design, very importantly, textile design for print, for knit, and for weave, and again, native integration with Illustrator at this part of the platform. So companies can come onto the platform initially in the areas that suit them best. And last but not least, color development. Again, an area unique to Lectra. This is all around color palette development and management, color libraries, spectral color management, and lab dip and approval management processes. So I'm sure you'll agree a very, very rich offer from design to production. And another customer in Italy, Imperial Fashion, who have been very pleased with the support that Lectra has brought them in terms of meeting their strategic objective with the implementation of Lectra Fashion PLM. So a lot of information 
and therefore important to remind us what we're trying to do. It's how to manage complexity in a changing environment. This is basically helping companies to face increased complexity. And then to do that, you need to have organizational agility, fast decision making, team alignment, individual efficiency, and real-time data accuracy and visibility. And as Mark Park, Nike CEO, says, in the end of the day, people don't care about process. They care about what comes out. You know what's the result of the work that you're doing. So really, the importance of all these processes and the technology that supports them is to make sure that you as a retailer or a brand have the opportunity and the time to develop the best product for your consumers. Now, just a couple of closing points. Lectra, founded in 1973, over 40 years in fashion, 23,000 customers, some of whom you can see there in front of you. We also to support many schools around the world to make sure that the young people are coming out into the industry with knowledge of our solution. Over 32 wholly owned subsidiaries, which is why Lectra has a very strong global presence, and we probably have an office near to you. 180 million euros invested over the past 10 years in technology ensures that the platform is bringing you the latest in technology efficiency. And it's developed by several hundred research and development engineers based at Lectra's R&D site in Bordeaux. So, with no further ado, I will hand back to Heather and we'll see if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. Um, I do have a question here that's come through. Um, if anybody else wants to send anything through, then please do. Um, we have a question here. How is Lectra currently working with retailers based in Africa? Is it any different to how other business models are operating? Well, um, Lectra is very active in southern Africa. And so we have offices there and um, we can certainly support customers there. Is it different? I would say honestly not. Um, we have some very sophisticated retailers and brands in that area, and uh, I would say that um, they're very, very happy to share in the experience of our best practices, and it's the same types of business models there as in Europe, as in North America, and as in Asia. Fantastic. Okay, um, another question we have here. Um, do the color libraries include updates from Pantone? Yes, absolutely. So Electra, we are very blessed. We have very rich libraries and our libraries get updated. So where we have um, Pantone colors or where we have uh, quality tests, we do update these. Okay, brilliant. I hope that helps. Um, We've got a question here which you may wish to, uh, maybe one that's a bit uh, difficult to answer without a conversation, but someone's asking for costs. Uh, they'd like to know the kind of cost that's involved to use the service at Lectra. Now, I guess, would I be right in thinking, Judy, that this is something that's very dependent on the customer and what their needs are? No, absolutely. But I think what I would say, what's important about the Lectra offer is it is modular. And therefore, you can start relatively small and you can scale up. And that's very important to our customers. So as I mentioned before, when we qualify a customer need, we'll make it clear based on our experience um, where we think the customer should start. If mm -hmm. customers can make a budget known, that's also very helpful to us to help size a project. Mm -hmm. But um, perhaps an indication is that I would say that probably what we would determine a small project um, is around, say, 15 to 20 users beginning on the platform. So that might give an idea. Um, I would say that Lectra, the richness of our solution and the initial investment means that really under 
15 to 20 users, it would be quite expensive um, for the investment. But as you then scale up, obviously, relatively speaking, the costs are less per head. So we would, I would also, in terms of our install base, we have quite a, no, a number of projects around 50 people on the platform that we can then go up much, much higher. Okay. Well, again, I hope that um, helps to answer the question for our listener. Um, I do have some other questions here. It's all right. I'm trying to read and also ask the yeah, questions because okay. there's quite a lot coming in. Um, can Lecture PLM be successful uh, to use in a buying house business? In a buying, sorry? A buying house business. So in the sense of a, of a sourcing, that for me, what yes. I understand yes. from that is probably a sourcing office. So absolutely. Yes. I mean, the challenge that, um, let's say, if, you, if you're in a sense the supplier, the person in the middle, the challenge is that you're going to be receiving, uh, let's say, the, the tech pack requirements from the retailers upstream and you're going to be handing off downstream to manufacturers, if I'm understanding the positioning of the buying house. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms, so there's no reason that a, a platform, that, they, that the need to consolidate data, to share information in your organization, to have easy access to information, that need is absolutely there. Um, and it can be managed by a PLM. So it's more in terms of integrating the data. Um, but we do have the possibility to do that, to integrate with external systems. So I think that's the challenge there, is how do we get the retail data into the buying house management and then out again to the manufacturers? But mm. That's probably okay. a, 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 a second conversation. Yeah, yeah. I just say, um, I hope this is this is helping the the, the listeners to um, to get more of a handle on on what Lecture can offer. Um, I have another question here. Um, I'll read it to you in full because it will probably be clearer that way. Can you explain more about whether the color control is able to provide QTX data to suppliers for color development? or is the system designed for tracking after physical SDD sent to supplier? No, it can do the former. Okay. So it's about, if I'm understanding the question properly, it's about ensuring that the correct color is developed at the supplier. Okay. And so it's it, it, and absolutely about ensuring uh, color consistency from design out to production. Right. Okay. Now, last but not least, we've got a few more minutes, and I'll just ask a last couple of questions. Um, are these types of projects very disruptive to the day-to-day -day business? Um, they can be, in the sense that um, it's, these are major projects. However, mm. If they are managed correctly, much, much less so. And that's really where I would say it's the importance of dealing with a vendor who not only has the technology but also has the project management skills and who has done major project uh, technology implementations before. So we will explain how you will require a project team, how you will require to provide individuals who know their role inside out and who have a position themselves as super users within a project and mm -hmm. we agree together how much of their time will be needed on the project. So if the project is properly set up and supported, then there is no reason at all that it should actually disrupt the normal day to day. But it needs to be managed well and that's what Lectra has the knowledge to do. Yeah, that must be a, a worry for people when they're impl implementing this type of thing into their supply chain is that they want to make sure that their day-to-day -day business continues without disruption, and that's quite important. Um, is Lecture the only technology vendor offering this type of approach for the fashion apparel market? Well, there are other companies who offer, who of course have 
uh, product lifecycle management offers. But Lectra is unique in the breadth of its offer and in its ability to extend the platform to the product development tools such as the 2D CAD and the 3D CAD and even further out into the cutting room and then right at the front to extend into the design area with our textile module and the ability to natively link to Adobe Illustrator. So Lectra's overall footprint is unique in the market today. Okay, brilliant. And one final question. Um, uh, where are we? Do you, would you say that, that, that factories in developing countries can afford Lectra, the Lectra product or have the technical knowledge to be able to use it? Um, this listener says he has an understanding of the project uh, of, of the product and um, as he understands it uh, to make it work with a PLM solution all parties along the supply chain need to use it so is that possible in sort of more developing countries would you say well absolutely in the sense that many uh, many retailers want their suppliers to be connected onto the collaborative platform Mm. So, um, certainly in a sense where they can download information, where they can, I mean, downloading information is in a sense like the first level, but ideally yeah. if key suppliers can actually be on the platform, then they can begin to be providing more of the services along the supply chain for the retailers. And as today, many retailers are moving more and more towards a direct to manufacturer approach, the more that the suppliers can be connected, the better it is. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I think that's about all we've got time for. Um, thank you for the questions that we have. Um, any ones that we haven't got through to, I'm going to send through to Judy anyway, so she can get back in touch or let you can get back in touch with you with any specific inquiries that you have. I hope everybody has enjoyed today's webinar. It's been a real insight. Um, it will be available on demand probably from around about next week. Um, on both Just Style and I presume also on the lecture uh, website where you can view it and listen to it at your leisure. Uh, thanks, Judy. I, um, thank you. you. You've worked very hard today with two of these <laughs> in one day. Um, and thanks everybody for logging in and sticking with us and um, hopefully we'll have some uh, excellent feedback from you in the future. And that's it for today. Thanks, Judy. Thanks all. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye.